Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to CozyCon yeah. Online. Well, I guess you've been here for a little bit already, but welcome to Zoology 101, everybody. My name is Dr. Wildlife. If you don't know who I am, <laughs> I am, in fact, an in real life zoologist. I've been working in the world of zoos and aquariums for about 14 years now. I've worked with a wide assortment of animals from elephants, crocodiles, tigers. You can't tell. Tigers are uh, my favorite animal and my specialty when it comes to conservation research. And joining me today is Entobird. They are, um, Hello. This is the true height difference between us in real life. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No. I'm actually this much taller. <laughs> I'm actually this much taller. Yes. I promise you. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll Doc stop pestering you. Tall in person. I am. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Here, while you're introducing yourself, I'll get down to your height. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, hi. I'm Entobird. I'm a PhD candidate uh, at the University of Guelph. I study insects, and I love doing science communication with Doc. Yes. And if you guys wonder why I keep doing this, uh, <laughs> to see you guys in the Twitch chat, since this isn't my own Twitch channel, um, I, you guys are very tiny and you're over in this area. So anytime you see me like peeking this way, I'm trying to read what you guys are saying. Ah, you follow us yeah. on Twitter. Good, good, good. Very good, very good. Just checking. Uh, okay, I got. Um, you know what? The con hasn't told us we're doing anything wrong, so I'm assuming we are all good. <laughs> if there is, <laughs> if there are any audio issues, if you think the music's too loud, it should be a little louder, or our voices, blah blah blah. Let us know. Our voices should be good. I just don't want the music to um drown out poor Into, poor Into here. No. <laughs> I'm quiet. I'm small. Yes. I, uh, Zray, Zray says, I heard Dr. Wildlife is like seven feet tall. It's true. I mean, look at this. This is real life. This is the real life difference. Short. Short. Very short. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, Harley. Chewy. Awesome. We're so happy to have all our, our friends here and meeting new people, yeah. too. Um, you know what? I just yeah. realized something that neither of us did. Something that neither of us did. All right. Our pronouns. Our pronouns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have pronouns. Everybody has pronouns. <laughs> Everybody has them, whether you think you have them or not. Our preferred pronouns are very easy to remember because we are both non-binary scientists, and we both prefer they, them. Very easy. Very easy to remember, everybody. No harm done if anybody's used incorrect ones in the chat because that, that's... We didn't say it yet. We didn't say it yet, but our pronouns are they, them. Literal experts, we try our best. We're very we professional. We're very professional, yes. The twi- oh, Barry, it's the real-life Twitter sensations, Dr. Wildlife and Into- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? Enough about us. Enough about us. Let's talk about what we're gonna do here today. So, this is CozyCon Online. And you're currently at our panel, which is Zoology 101. And we are going to try our best. Try our best. And probably fail. And probably fail. Probably fail. Pro most definitely. There's a 99% likelihood that we will <laughs> fail. We know this because we've yeah. tried to do this before and it has always not went well. It's went well. It's went well. People have fun. People learn. Well, it's I mean, it's here we are. We're five, stuff. We just we're five minutes in. We haven't even started on it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so five minutes in, haven't even started. Not looking good, you guys. But this is Zoology 101, and we're going to try our best. Try our best to combine a whole semester-long zoology class in one hour. Or in our one case, hour. 55 minutes. Probably 54 minutes. Maybe 53 minutes by the time we actually start. <laughs> <laughs> it's decreasing by the second. It's decreasing by the second. Ah, uh, tea leaf, I hope. Up to one day be a they them scientist as well. Yes. Well, you you already are. You're a great MB science communicator. Scientist Army. MB scientist Army. We're powerful. <laughs> it is lots of fishies. Yes. All right. So you know what? Enough about us. You guys. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna dig into the the meat. 
the meat of this, and this is where you look at just the slide so we can awkwardly shuffle to the other side of the VR room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you guys, so, you guys, so. so you guys could see us, <laughs> um, and the slides. This is the awkward shuffle. So yes, that's Zoology 101. I forgot I had a slide for that. You already know the name. Why am I still on this slide? Lord only knows. So <laughs> we've actually <laughs> we already did that we've <laughs> actually already introduced ourselves. See, we oh, it's going to all. It's all according to plan. It's going good. All according to plan, everybody. Look how cute we are, though. Can we just can we admire that for a little bit? Look how cute. Look how cute. Yes. Yeah, anyway. Pretty cute. Yeah. pretty cute. Pretty cute. I would say a little bit more. Pretty you know, cute. a little bit more on the scale. I, I, so Doc's kneeling in this photo. <laughs> yeah, Doc's yeah, kneeling yeah. Doc. I'm kneeling. I'm kneeling. <laughs> I'm kneeling in that photo, everybody. I'm kneeling. What's the syllabus? Everything. Everything's the syllabus. I would like to apply Everything. for the MB Scientist biology. Army. Yes. Well, if you're a scientist and you're MB, you're already accepted. You don't even have to apply. You're just immediately in it. All right. <laughs> uh, don't mind me trying to find where my slides are. Here they are. <laughs> All right, guys, we have a very big question for you. Very, very big question for you. What is life? In the chat, what's your definition of life? Hmm? What's the definition? And if you say 42, if you say 42, I'm going to come through the screen and I'll give you a <laughs> high five. But I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm not looking for 42. I'm looking for uh, a more detailed answer. You don't have to give me a, a thesis article on it. Don't have to give me a thesis article about it. Oh my God, what is life, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. That, you know, that's actually the first time I've heard that one. So I will give you props to that. That's life, good life is an experience. Saray says you're ahead of the slides already. Y'all are doing great. We are professionals. We're professionals. We also, are. we should we should say we should say that there's a test at the end. Oh, there's a test at Very the end. Very important test. There's a test. Yeah. Yeah. You, gotta, you have to write all of this down. You have to write all of it down. All of it. Uh, life. Oh, someone said life is pain. That is so like. No, that's. That's so sad. Real. Um, experience <laughs> in the world. It's not my life. Uh. Oh. Oh. Yeah. We got a bunch of people panicking now. Yes. Yes. Test anxiety, test anxiety. All right, so the point of this is everybody has various definitions of what life is. Oh, I'm like, I'm gonna move, oh, I'm gonna move a little over. <laughs> I'm not trying to slap you around. I'm just like, I look and I'm behind the slide. I was like over here, no one can, oh, wait. Wait, which way do we need to go, hmm? hmm? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> Ants anyway, in face. any did you say ants in your face? That'd actually be pretty on point. No, I know that's hands. not I know that's not what yeah, you said, but quite bad. Yes. Yes. Anyway, the point is, the point is everybody has various definitions of what life is in their own eyes based on their own experiences and such. But zoology doesn't care about that. Zoology does not care about that. Does not care. Science is a science in nature is a very cruel mistress very cruel and there's a set hard definition to it which is not fun not fun at all it's not like 42 it's not exciting like that instead it's pretty ambiguous it is yes yeah so life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of darwinian evolution very exciting isn't it very exciting name <laughs> but that's just kind of like one of the major definitions that zoologists use to describe the world around them but in actuality there's a few other points that we often use to like categorize something as life or the properties of life and depending on which zoologist you talk to which scientists you talk to they may say well there's three main properties there's five there's eight there's seven oh whoever you talk to it can be kind of confusing. But we're going to stick with seven right here because, you know, that seems to be the most standard. It's the one that I most commonly refer to. I don't know. I don't know about you, Into, um, but this is the one that I most often see myself. But what have you yeah, seen? I would say that's accurate. Mm, nice. So the properties of life are actually pretty simple to remember and understand. All life has order. 
all life is capable of reproduction. And then this is where things get a little tricky. I like, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I know you guys can see me rolling up my sleeves in real life. It's because it's getting serious. <laughs> I'm actually rolling up. I have a sweatshirt on now and I, you know, I'm rolling up my fur, which sounds scary. That sounds painful. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this is where things get a little weird because this is where people are like, well, that means viruses are alive because they are able to reproduce. And we're not going to get into viruses today. You go to go to Chise. Chise is the virus person. <laughs> the virus one in the fandom. But what about Darwinian evolution? What about Dar Darwinian evolution? You're into? That was our definition of life. It is. They don't. But we're well, not going to talk about that today. Yeah, yeah viruses. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we don't. Yes. Anyway, um, all life is capable of growth and development. Uh, energy processing. That's a fancy way of saying bear eat fish. Um, <laughs> bear get energy from fish. Uh, all life responds to the environment. All life regulates in some way whether it's self-regulation or environmental regulation it does and lastly as Anto was saying all life is capable of evolutionary adaptation but before we get into that big word yes. before we get in that big word we need to talk about taxonomy how would you describe taxonomy Anto? what is what is your way oh terrible terrible <laughs> terrible you, ha you heard it here of life based on similar traits and then giving a scientific name to something. Yes. And kind of the way that I like to describe it, because I like, I've taught to like middle schools and, and high schools and stuff. I, I, I go a little, uh, a little sillier and I say taxonomy is kind of like nature's filing cabinet of names. And basically what taxonomy does is like the whole system of taxonomy is the big filing cabinet and then you have drawers and within that drawer there are yep. folders and sometimes within those folders you have more folders and sometimes within those folders you have even more folders and it keeps going and it keeps going and there's so many folders and somewhere people in there keep you keep adding folders too people keep adding folders sometimes they take entire folders out they burn them they say no more don't want that folder that folder was bad no they more. they no. go t -t -t -t. they spit on it and then they burn it. I don't know how loud that is for you guys. I'm sorry if our, our fake spitting is uh, so harmful to your ears. But yeah, they go, T and they say, don't want that name anymore. <laughs> That's what taxonomy is. And if it sounds confusing, it's because it is. It is very confusing. But ultimately, what taxonomy does is assign scientific names to animals and allows us to understand their relationship to other animals in a scientific sense. For example, all carnivores being grouped together, like this leopard example here all cats being grouped together, all big cats being grouped together, et cetera, et cetera. And you can trace it really far back to see how things that aren't even the big fuzzies are related to the big fuzzies. And it gets a little complicated. Yes. Everybody's still talking about viruses. No more viruses. We're not, we don't. No, we, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're no more. On. This is not the class. Uh, the cluster class Cluster says sometimes the folders are put inside other folders and then moved to a different cabinet altogether. Oh my god, you're so right. I want to cry oh, thinking about that. Yes, yes. So that's taxonomy. That's taxonomy for you guys in a nutshell. And you may be thinking, okay, well, Doc, after all that stress, what's the point of it all? We have common names like dog, tiger, etc. So why should we even care about the scientific names? Does anyone know? Why why do we go through the stress of it all to learn scientific names? Taxonomy is here to torture students, yes. Has nothing to do with assigning names to people that's bad. Uh wait, are you talking about taxonomy? I mean taxonomy has nothing to do with like our individual names, right? So I wouldn't say our individual names are common names, but it does assign our species, humans, um, to Homo sapiens, which is ultimately um, part of the great apes and et cetera, et cetera, all the way back. And all those drawers and cabinets. Uh, tea Leaf already predicted what we're going to next. They knew. They knew. So the answer to why learn scientific names instead of common names, Tea Leaf answered and gave an example, and that was, because cougar is so funky and cannot choose name. 
Yeah. Okay, sure. let's see, let's see, let's see what Doc had up their sleeve. What did Doc have up their sleeve? It's this. You're absolutely right. So, I don't know if Into has a better example, but this is the one I always stick to, and it's that this animal has the Guinness Book World Record for the animal with the most number of names. They actually have 40 different names in the English language alone. And that's not including all the other languages where this animal is found. So they're found all the way up in Canada, down into the U.S., down in Central America, and almost to the very bottom of South America. They have the largest range out of any mammal there is. I'm curious, you guys. What do you know this animal by? I know uh, Tea Leaf already said cougar, I think. Does anybody else know it by different names? Until got a head pat, yes. Snow lion. Snow lion. I actually haven't heard that one, but that's very fitting. Big kitty, yes. Puma. Mountain lion, yes. Mountain lion. Lots of mountain lions. Oh, lion's good. Yeah. Lot, lots of people saying mountain lion, and I, I wonder if you guys are all in kind of the same region because all these diff all these English names are. Um, <laughs> my brain turned off for a second. All these English names are related to where specifically are they are found. Uh, you probably heard cougar, puma, mountain lion, uh, catamount is another name, but it's a little uncommon. Mountain screamer because of the screaming sound that their vocalizations sound like. Uh, panther. Florida Panther, etc. So these are all common names. These are all common names. And we learn scientific names because it is easier for us to communicate as scientists who exactly we're talking about. And now you're probably wondering, okay, they, they gave this definition of life. What exactly is evolution? And, you know, I like to say evolution isn't the big scary thing that you may have been taught about as a kid. I say this because for me, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in Arkansas. The town had 300 people. My graduating class had 32. And this school, despite being a public school, never once talked about evolution. When we got to it in the book, they said, you know what? We're skipping this. And it was kind of like this taboo topic, but I'm here to tell you it is nothing bad. It is nothing bad. Evolution is just a natural process, just like, I mean, gravity isn't quite the same but you growing. know like mm, growing <laughs> dying <laughs> other things <laughs> being born it is a natural process it's a natural process and if you're like me you may have never learned about what evolution actually is so we're going to try our best to explain it as <laughs> as efficiently as we can evolution is essentially change over time that's all it is that all it is in a nutshell and it occurs to species, not individuals. So as much as you may want it to be, Ento is not going to go into the backyard and see a bug magically and very yeah. quickly evolve into something like a dragon. Or I don't know. I'm trying to like, haven't been keeping up with Pokemon, <laughs> but I'm trying to give a Pokemon <laughs> reference. Not, well, metamorphosis happens. Metamorphosis that's happens, true. but that's, that's different from evolution. That's true. Yes, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Maybe I gave a bad example, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> You're not going to walk in your backyard and see a squirrel turn into a dragon or something. As cool as that yeah, would be. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. If you do, then you may want to look into <laughs> local contaminants, mutations, you and you may... Write, uh, write a new paper on yeah. squirrels that change into dragons. It's... That'd be a cool paper. Dragon squirrels. Dragon <laughs> squirrels. Someone's got to have a Sona that's a dragon squirrel. Anyway, evolution is Probably. essentially what explains all of the diversity that is present on our planet today. And in terms of diversity, you guys are going to hate me for this. Into may even hate me for this. I use the word huge. People ask Doc how much diversity is there is. And I say, well, there's a huge amount of diversity. And the reason why I use that word. Lorg. Lorg there's a lot because we don't actually know the exact number between species that is you know tiger puma cheetah bear dog etc between species we estimate that there's anywhere from 10 to 100 million species on our planet million 100 million millions, millions. 100 million so many so many 
We don't know the exact numbers because we're still exploring the world around us and we le learn every day. We learn every day. And then of course, within species, there's diversity. So all of you in the chat, all of you look completely different from one another. You all have different voices, you know, different hair colors, eye colors, skin colors, et cetera, et cetera, height, weight, so many things. There's so much diversity just within humans themselves. And then think about tigers or, you know, any of the other animals on our planet. They're not all exactly the same. There's diversity there. All of this is a result of evolution. So, Ento. Yes. Let's talk about the first step of evolution. What would you explain the over... Yeah, what is overpopulation? So, there are more individuals that are born that can survive. That means that you have an increasing number of individuals that are being born, given birth to, raising, growing, and then that inevitably results in differentiation. You have mutations, you have growth mm. within those populations, and that results in evolution. Yes. So the example we have on the photo here is about sea turtles, right? So there's always more sea turtles, sea turtle eggs laid than there will ever hatch in more hatch than will ever survive because these sea, tur sea turtles they go through a gauntlet of issues trying to get to the ocean and become an adult so like into said more are born than could ever survive there's also competition for resources and this is kind of where people s start to say like survival of the fittest i guess this is the closest real thing that happens to this and essentially it means that there's limited resources even if you don't like don't even think about humans right now don't even think about like what we're doing to the planet let's just talk like pristine earth there's still going to be limited resources and species and within species will have to compete for those resources we already talked about this but there's variation there's differences among individuals and all of this is a result of genetic mutations this is where i'm like oh my god we're almost halfway done i gotta go i got, gotta go fast through evolution <laughs> i gotta go uh okay so some of these differences some of these variations they give you a slight survival advantage oh my god my arm broke on camera that is not that was not a good survival adaptation uh -oh. mm -hmm, that was none <laughs> so some of these traits lead to increased survival and these are what are called favorable traits what this eventually leads to is the process of natural selection, which ultimately is the big how behind evolution. It is the process behind evolution. Basically, those with the best traits survive, reproduce, and pass their genes on. I have this silly example right here, which here I'll switch to a um, bigger screen for you guys. Uh, sorry if you have rats as pets. I know this may be sad to see little rats getting picked off. I, I for one, I love rats. I love rats so much. So don't think this is a this is a rat rat hate uh, slide or anything. I do love them. So essentially, these are pretend little sand rats, and the, <laughs> these sand rats, some of them stand out, some of them blend in. The hawks or other predators, they find the rats stand out a lot easier, and they have a much easier meal. They don't have to use as much energy, so they go after them. And over time, the ones that have the genes to camouflage better live, breed and pass on their genes to the next generation. This is ultimately what natural selection is in its most simplistic form. Of course, over time, this can lead to speciation, which means that uh, all the changes build up, you start to see new species develop. The best example is the Galapagos finches that Charles Darwin really, really loved. I know there's a lot of information on this image and we're going kind of quick, but essentially over time, um, the different shaped beaks that the original ancestor finch had started to uh, evolve into different shapes based on the type of food they were eating. So those with longer beaks ate insects, sorry, Ento. And those with <laughs> bigger yeah. beaks ate nuts and other things like They're that. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they ate a wide, wide variety of things and it evolved into the species that we have and know on our planet today. All right. Adaptations. And so I'll, I'll let you, uh, oh my gosh, I lost the slide. No. All right. Oh, uh. What kind of adaptations do we have? What are the three types into? No pressure. We've got structural, chemical, and behavioral. Structural being the shape of the body, chemical being the chemical processes within the body and receiving information from the environment, behavioral being how you interact with that environment. Yes. 
Very true. And very quickly, we'll give some examples of that. Um, in octopus, they have these special cell types, physical cells, and their skin called chromatophores that allow them to change texture and color. They can not only blend in exactly with the color of a sandy environment, they can make themselves look like sand. Poison dart frogs, they're able to, basically they look at ants and they say, you will be good in my stomach. They eat the ants. The ants, in the most simplistic of forms, Into's gonna hate this example because I'm gonna butcher it. They eat the ants. No. The ants contents interact with the poison dart frog's chemical system and eventually it processes into a poison mucus that is secreted by the dart frog. That's the most simple way of saying it. Uh, biochemistry and me do not get along, so I will just leave it at that. <laughs> and then behavioral. So this one's a little bit of a mix, I would say. A little bit of a yeah. mix. Yeah, is it, is it structural, chemical, and behavioral, I would say. Mm -hmm. Get some insects that physically look like leaves or mm -hmm. sticks in the environment, mm -hmm. and then they behave like that. They I move their same. bodies as they would as the wind pushes the twigs, they move like the twigs would move in the wind and that kind of thing. And that protects them from potential predators. Mm -hmm. And then what else can they do when, when they are pretending to be a leaf? What happens? What happens if they can attack? So when they, <laughs> when something something comes their way and they're like, oh, a leaf, I'm gonna eat this leaf, and it's like JK, and it eats it, and then it's it's no more. It's, rest in peace. Um, very quickly, another way that species are formed is through isolation. So things like new islands forming. Obviously, this is something that is incredibly slow um, and happens over lengthy periods of time. But when species get isolated from the rest of their populations and are subjected to different changes on each side, for example, these pork fish. Um, they become new species. And when we talk about evolution here, I'll, uh, I'll make this a little bigger for you guys. When we talk about evolution and we're trying to understand how animals are related to one another, we use something called a cladogram. And this is the boring version of what a tree of life actually is. So this is actually a very simplistic cladogram and it's basically showing the relationship between all vertebrates. Um, it's showing how traits, when they evolved new groups, split off. Now you guys may notice on here, there's something weird going on. What What's the mistake on this cladogram? What should actually be moved? I'm gonna switch over to the chat. Oh, loving the gator propaganda and the PowerPoint images. Ga what gator propaganda? Do I have gator propaganda? Gator. I, lo I do love gators. Any guesses, guys? What's wrong with this cladogram? You guys are really, there really. There was cannon uh... propaganda. Oh, there was. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I see. Uh, Galapagos finches are quite the rabbit hole of an example. There were species that changed their beak shapes to adapt to food sources. On the particular islands they inhabit, these changes were consistent enough to classify them as new species. Exactly. Yes. 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 So on this cladogram, yeah, guys. We start to classify things. Taxonomy. Yep. Taxonomy. Taxonomy strikes again. So when it comes to this cladogram, the thing that's a little odd here is the shelled eggs. So there's actually some mammals that do lay eggs. The platypus and the echidna. Carly already knew about the platypus. Maybe not the echidna, but this is what they look like. They look like a weird little porcupine creature. They're very adorable. If you've never seen them in this form, you've probably seen them in Fantastic Beasts because the Niffler was actually modeled after um, echidnas. Though echidnas in real life probably don't have as much of affinity to shiny gold rich things as the Niffler does. Now, we don't have time for this, you know what? But it's still gonna be on the exam. So I hope you look at it, hope you're soaking it in because it is gone. <laughs> yeah, get it? Yeah. Oh. It's gone. Yeah, and trace that exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I sure- into the VOD. I sure hope so, I sure hope so. Screams in Sonic fan, yes. Oh yeah, I forget. I'm so sorry, I forget. I watched Sonic when I was younger and I forgot. I'm so sorry. But now we're gonna actually start getting to animal groups and you may be confused because you're like, Doc, why? Oh my gosh, I'm opening the wrong things on my computer. Here we go. Um, <laughs> uh, it's hard to do things when you, have, uh, you don't have human hands and you're in a VR world. All right. These guys are animals. Sponges are animals, you guys. Sponges are animals. Isn't that weird? 
Now, I'm not saying the sponge on your kitchen sink. Now we sink. go through all of life. We now know we what life is now. Now we're going through all of life. Quick, yes. quick, quick. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, oh, we got 30 minutes. Um, uh, sponges. They belong to a group called Peripheria. Um, they are sponges, as you can see by bullet point one. Sponges. I'm going to keep saying sponges. One more time. Sponges. So <laughs> they are animals, but they don't have any tissues. They don't have any organs. Oh, my God. I grabbed my little seahorse friend. He got, he got in the motion zone. <laughs> anyway, um... They don't have tissues or organs, but they are still animals. They do have different types of cells, though, and one of those is a special feeding cell called a clanocyte, which is a cell has little hair-like structures on it, and when the sponge filter feeds, it picks up stuff. The end. That's sponges. What are you laughing about? You laughing about my? You laughing about my sponge description? <laughs> you got anything else yeah. to say about sponges? Yeah. yeah it went <laughs> No, no, okay, we're no more sponges, everybody. Next, we're in Phylum Nideria. They have tissues, as you can see by bullet point one and the bolding. They have tissues. Sponges don't. These guys, the Nideerians, they look at the sponges and they go, t -t. they say, t -t. T -t. you don't have tissues, but I do. And Nideria is not just the jellyfish and jellyfish relatives, but it also includes corals and fake corals. Yes, there are things as uh, such as fake jellyfish and fake corals the the roundabout thing about these guys is almost all of them have stinging cells called nid nidocytes i mispronounced that both times but you know what we're gonna keep moving <laughs> they have stinging <laughs> cells they sting you just... there's there's even coral like uh animals that can sting even though they look like a rock they're called fire corals you swim into them you can have a really bad Don't time touch the spicy rock don't, Don't touch, touch the spicy, spicy rock. rock. Um, and then I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave you with this thought and your idea, where you have to Google search it later because you're like, "What the heck did Doc <laughs> mean?" Um, that's not a jellyfish in that picture. That's a Portuguese man of war, and they are not jellyfish because they are actually a colony. Communal animals. Yes. Thank you. The end. No more Nigerians. They're gone, everybody. <laughs> I hope you took notes. Coral bleaching. It's bad. <laughs> It's a bad thing. It's bad. It's very bad. Don't do uh, it. Don't pollute the environment. It's killing things. It's killing animals. They're don't killing do animals in the ocean. It's killing like rocks. Don't kill the it's rocks. It's killing the rock animals, you guys. And coral bleaching happens through temperature, acidification of the ocean, and direct pollutants. And basically, it's when corals lose their mutualistic algae. If you can't tell, this is this is the part of the class where we increasingly talk faster and faster until the end. So buckle up. Hope you're all wearing your seatbelts. <laughs> Look, it's really bad, you guys. Look at this. It's really bad. That's it. Weep. Weep. This is just, where we all start weeping. Chat. Just to clarify. Tears we, in the chat. Yeah, tear, can we get tears in the chat, please, everybody? Um, Just so you guys know, we, we do take all this seriously, but obviously this is a goofy panel where we're trying to combine everything into one hour. Uh, if you ever want to talk about coral reefs, you can message us and we'll talk more seriously about it. Um, okay, how's everybody yeah. doing? Let's see. You thought they were jellyfish. They are not. They are colony. Um, Weep faster. Yes, weep, weep faster and uh, put more tears in the chat. We need it. They fuel us. Uh, and you may be wondering, uh, <laughs> where is Phylum Analyta in the grand scheme of things? Or actually, you may be like, uh, professors, you never even said what Analyta was, so how would we even have the thought of wondering where they are? <laughs> well, they're worms, you guys. They're worms. You're and they now. They're and worms. They're worms, and they're kind of in the middle right. You can see the little pink, the little pink thing here. You know what? You're briefly going to be able to look at it. Wow. Look at that resolution. And it's gone. So that's the that's the tree of life and where analysts fall. And everything else. Yeah, everything right else. There. Yeah. You see them right there. And actually, if you look towards the bottom, um, there's the sponges and jellies. And the non-jelly things. The things that look at jellies and say, I'm gonna I'm gonna be an imposter. You I'm remember gonna... the cladograms of where things fall? That that makes more sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, see tree Very of life. Cool. Common ancestors. Very cool. Uh also worms, despite you know being worms uh they were actually the first animals to have what's called triploblastic body organization which means that instead of just being a solid lump of whatever there's actually compartments within their bodies and i'm gesturing at myself aggressively because we have this type of body organization <laughs> um the the tiger the the bird gri griff the bird bird, bird griffin not bird. a real thing <laughs> part of a real thing i struggled for a second the seahorse the fish behind me. We all have triple plastic body organization. You may be wondering, Doc, are there other types? Yes, there are, but you know what? They're right there on the slide. We're not going to talk about them. They we're do. Getting segmentation. We're getting differentiation. Yeah. Evolution. Segmentation. Things. Things. Different parts. And what this means is that the analids is where you first start to see 
the body divided into segments. For some of them, this means that they lose a particular segment, they can still live. For others, not so much. That's metameric segmentation, having having little tiny compartments. Um, did you know the earthworms have hair? They do, and they use it to move. Yeah. That's movement. Yeah, they pull themselves along. They, they, <laughs> they make that sound too. They, they actually too. they actually do, yes. <laughs> they make that sound. Um, so the group that includes the earthworms also includes alicia's and can we appreciate the name for earthworms Aligakita. i love that name Aligakita. yeah very, it's very good very good name um yeah closed circulatory system worms got them how's that different from bugs into they got an open circulatory system <laughs> they get oxygen from the environment comes in through holes in their body they get oxygen through their holes it goes right to their cells it's open you sound so violent so about this. It's you, out, now sorry. it's going so fast. They got holes in their body, you guys. Holes. Holes, uh, and that's where that's like yeah, yeah. yeah. Guess, time. No time. Guess what time it is? It's leech time. Uh, leeches. They have leech two time. brains. They have two brains. Everybody, two brains. One at each end. There's a central nerve cord that connects the two. Wow, creepy. Oh, and also, did you know that they are still used in medical situations sometimes, just not as frequently? Yes, you too could have a leech yeah. at a hospital. Keep circulation moving. Kurt, keep that circulation going. Pull that off. blood. Pull, pull the blood. Polychaeta. They're like the annelids, but not. <laughs> it's the largest group of them. Um, so you I do say that. Two brains, Barry. Whist. You're good. You got two yeah. brains. Okay. Good. 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 Just in one place. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Polychaeta. They're the largest group of annelids. Um, they got parapodia, which is tiny little feet. And honestly, I know it's a little creepy, but look at them. I think it's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. Like, you know, I could go on a long soap opera discussion about this, but a lot of people, they think tigers or like the fish, manta rays and whatever that swim behind us are the beautiful animals. But really, there's beauty wherever you look in the natural world, even if it is something like a creepy worm. Um, like uh, Bobby here. Bobby's a bobbit worm. We call him Bobby because he's terrifying. And if we call him Bobby, it makes him a little less scary. Um, these guys are predators. They're giant predators and they hide in the sand. <laughs> And they wait for a fish to swim overhead, and then they jump out and they get them with those pinchers. Uh, stuff of nightmares. Lots of cool videos on YouTube about them. Precious oh. babies protect them. Phyla mollusca. <laughs> I'm dying. Uh, Phyla mollusca. <laughs> There's a subclass, Chamber like Nautilus. Cool. Mm, they're very cool. A lot of people don't realize that there are mollusks that still have shells, uh, like ancient am ammonites, but they still. <laughs> I almost said, um, oh my gosh, there's a religious group that start that sounds like Ammonite, but it's not, and I cannot remember what it is, but that's not what I meant. It is this, this thing right here in a shell. They look like a squid crawled into a giant shell, and they are amazing. Squids, they belong in their own special group. They're kind of cool. Some people eat them. I don't. Pierce me out a little bit, but if you uh, eat them, I, as long as it's... I like them. I know. Yeah. The precious babies and delicious. Precious, they give us both. Precious I mean, babies. Most things. Spice, most things. Yay, Nautilus. Oh, Mennonite. Thank you. Yes. Tasty phylum. Oh, my God. Sandworm. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love everybody saying Bobby. Thank you. Oh, I like how one of the people Bobby, saying Bobby, 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 Bobby is named Bob the Bob King. So, wait. That, you know what? Bob the Bob King is actually a Bobbit worm in disguise. That's Bobby talking up the name Bobby in the chat. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. But that would be really funny if your Sona was a bobbit worm. That would be very, very, very good. Um, anyway, squids. They look like this. And you know what? They actually still have shells. Isn't that wild? Their it's shells look the like this. Yeah, it's on the inside. And it looks like a little feather plastic piece. Uh, it looks like that. Yep. Shell. Oh my god. Cut, uh, yeah, cuttlefish. Cuttlefish also still have remnants of their shell. And they look like this. A cuttle bone. Wow. Now you know. Now you know. Buy one you... at a pet store. Buy one at a pet store that came from a cuttlefish. Creepy, isn't it? Yep. That's going to mess you up. Uh, squids. Squids. They move through jet. <laughs> they... <laughs> they... It's going to mess you up. Squids. They move through jet propulsion. They pull in water and they shoot it out. Wow. Amazing. Science. Science is wonderful. Uh, octopus. Very Fart transport. <laughs> What'd you say? Fart transport. <laughs> Fart transport. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Guys, can you believe that we actually have taught university classes? Professionals. I mean, sometimes I say fire transport 
at a university. That's oh, yeah. the kind of education you're paying for. Yeah, you're paying for the fart education, Big everybody. Bucks. There's actually a zoologist that made a book <laughs> called uh, Does It Fart? And it's a book about animals oh, and really? if they fart or not. Yes. Yeah, she works at the awesome. Zoological Society of London. Her name's uh, Dana. Yeah, I know her. She's really good. I watched a hedgehog. I watched a hedgehog fart yesterday. What? Was this when I was with you? <laughs> it was on TikTok. To clarify, oh okay. No, to no, no, it was on TikTok. To no, clarify, no, no. we ran a 5K at the Toronto Zoo yesterday, and I don't remember seeing a hedgehog or a hedgehog farting, so I had to ask. I was like, if it happened in person, why didn't you get <laughs> my attention? I it from the running. Oh yeah, oh I'm still feeling it today. But if you guys can tell, I'm uh, keeping up the energy, keeping up the energy for you guys. So octopus. Some countries actually recognize them as sentient creatures or sentient beings because they saw they are so amazingly intelligent. Here's a close-up look of those chromatophores that I was talking about earlier with the adaptations. They're like fluid-filled sacs. So if you were looking at an octopus as it's moving, you would actually see um, the fluid moving around in there, which is really cool. And that is what allows them to change uh, color and texture oh i don't really you know what i'm just gonna be honest i don't really care for this phylum i know they're really cool they're really yeah. cool they're really yeah. co they are really cool um the reason why i'm saying they're cool is because rotifers are the smallest rotifers. multicellular organisms smallest multicellular organisms this thing is more complicated than even the giant sponges so you know they have they have a whole system smallest and biggest what you mean hydros oh true 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 i'm impressed with your Chris energy Burr. after running a 5k yesterday yeah we did we did it oh oh yeah setting down is nice you guys wrote a first slander oh god it's gonna be like the great flatworm debate of t twitter oh we're no. not gonna oh actually we'll get to that in a minute this has gave me the the boost i needed to keep going i sat down for a moment and i talked about flatworms <laughs> rotifers are small um they can go through something called anhydrobiosis which is where when the water dries up they dry up but they don't die uh this process also extends into tardigrades and such which um okay we're not there yet we're not to them yet now we're getting the worms now we're getting to the other worm the other worms actually the other worms yes the flatworms yeah. plata hell there's so many worms that's why I common names suck yeah 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 it's true and you know what flatworms they are adorable they are also model organisms so there's a lot of research that that is done with them um what's really creepy is they are amazing at cell regeneration and growth if you were to like uh, this is terrible and i would probably never do it but if you um diced up this flatworm you chopped it up like you were chopping an onion, and you let it set for a week or so. In, oh, one of those slap chops? One yeah. of those slap chops. If you put a flatworm in a, in a slap chop, don't, please don't do it. If you put them in a slap <laughs> chop, they would actually, all those pieces would turn into its own flatworm. Wow. And now you probably uh, know why they're model organisms. People want to know how that exactly works so we can understand human growth and development and um, healing. Um, if you don't like parasites, this is the part. There's no gross pictures, just by the way. There's, I mean, if you consider this gross, then yes, but this is about as don't worse as it gets. Don't look these ones up. Don't look these up. Do don't not look Google these. these. Up. Uh, class Astoda, they're the nasty worms. They're the worms that do some cool things, but they are nasty. Why are tapeworms so in bad? They your body and eat your things. They eat, do. They they eat your eat things. Your things. Um, the reason why tapeworms yeah. are so bad, you guys, is that remember those segments that we were talking about earlier? You remember them? Each segment is capable of reproducing into its own tapeworm. And that's how, like, worm infestations and, like, your pets and stuff happen. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, I, I kind of, like, kept out all the Gruber ones. Okay, now it's Into's time to shine. I will just control the slides. I'm just going to sit down. All right. We got Panarthropoda. This is what I work with. These you got 15 got minutes. differentiation going on. We got open circulatory system. Oh, no. Wait, is it? Is there more stuff after Panarthropoda? Or can I just take up this 15 minutes? Well, you tell me. You're a zoologist. What other groups have we not got to, dear Into? I don't know. We're going uh, to ask. Okay, okay. Okay, well, uh, okay. What, oh, tell me. Okay, okay. What is included it's in Panarthropoda? Huh? What's included in it? Panarthropoda is all segmented exoskeletal organisms so we got we got things like the tarantulas we got things like the scorpions we got things like the crabs and the lobsters and we got things like the bugs the insects the insects 
Oh, there's a bunch of people saying yay bugs. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yay bugs, yay bugs. Yay bugs. So yeah, it's a lot of things, you guys. So many things. Oh. I don't know why I, tardigrades. I don't know why I put them here. Wait. I don't know why I put them yeah. in in this order. <laughs> I don't know why they're in this order. <laughs> we stole the tardigrades. I'm so we sorry. Wait, why are they here? Huh? Oh wait, they fall Oh my god. Yeah. They're included in Pan they're, Arthropoda. They're in here. Okay, keep going, keep going. What are yeah. these? What do we commonly call these? They're segmented. Yeah. They're like tiny bugs. What do we call these? Yeah, chat. Throw out the name. Everybody say it once. Yeah, what are these called? Everybody knows. Everybody knows what Are there roach are. pitchers? There's no, we have no roach no roach pitchers. The boys. They are oh, the boys, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tardigrades. Yeah, what's the common name? Yeah, what's the I know we said don't do common names, but now we're going back on what we said. Water bears! <laughs> water, water, bears. water bears! Yes. <laughs> They're so cute. Yes, we got that. Little so spider. These guys. Oh, we're gone. We're gone. That was it. <laughs> that was all we we're talking about. Trilisera, <laughs> the Trilisera. We got the spiders. These got book lungs. We're on the book lungs. That means that they fucking oxygen through books in their butts. <laughs> <laughs> they, next uh, slide. Oh, next slide. Wait, I can't even tell what this is. This is talking about how many bugs there are. Oh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> we're talking about the diversity of life. Diversity of the... Wait, are we talking about just... It's, a, it's everything. Insects? It has insects. It's everything? It's everything. Yeah, okay. It okay, Panarthropoda is most life that we have scientifically identified on the planet. There's probably a lot more flatworms and little rotifers, but we're not going to talk about those because we don't have anybody that really wants to study them. Uh, most life on the planet that we have given names to is Panarthropoda, and most of that life is insects. Most of that life is insects. Like 70% of life that we have identified species, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's go. <laughs> the way you started Hi, laughing and you. We don't want. <laughs> what? The way you started laughing and yeah. as soon as I switched the slide, you just cut yourself off. <laughs> is that how you feel? Echinoderms <laughs> is what includes Kevin. Kevin's included in it. Uh, but... And you don't care about Kevin? Kevin? He's green. He's green. No. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> All right, oh, I guess I'm, ta okay, I'm taking okay, I'm taking it over. I'm taking it over. Kevin, okay, Kevin's over. is a sea cucumber. They don't exactly look like this in real life. They look like this. Yep, that looks like underwater poo, but that is a sea cucumber. And what's even grosser than what they look like in normal circumstances, um, they actually um, will spit out their entire intestines as a, a way of defense, which is what is part of that structure that's coming out of the top of it right there. Um... Starfish. Not actually fish, you guys. They're echinoderms. So usually the, the politically correct way of <laughs> referring to them is by the word sea star. Amazing. They can also do gross things where they spit out their stomach, which is weird. Uh, sea urchins. Yes, they are a living animal. They look like this. They have a horrifying characteristic inside of them and on the underside called Aristotle's lantern, which is a sea urchin's version of teeth. That's how they grind up algae. They also like to wear hats, and I'm sorry... Is that them grinding it up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my actual teeth. They are, yes. Oh my god, that's your teeth. Um, so yeah, they like to wear hats. Uh, usually rocks in the wild, not actual little hats. Um, though you can find videos of them wearing little cowboy hats. And what they do with this is, uh, the reason why they wear rocks is to protect themselves from the sun. Predators. Well, guys, we've made it. We've made it to Phylum Chordata, which is the phylum that we are included in, as well as, you know... A bunch of weird little things like you're seeing pictures of here the eurochordates the cephalochordates etc and what unites all of these groups is that we have four main characteristics that make us chordates that is a there's a tail at some point in development we unfortunately lose them uh pharyngeal slits and some things that becomes gills other things it disappears in development a notochord and a dorsal hollow nerve cord this is not saying that you have to have all these characteristics for your entire life. It means at some point in development, they have them. And I want to say, I just want to put this picture here, um, because uh, for those that watch my Twitch streams, you know that uh, I shake my fist at this guy. I hate him. I hate him so much. Um, because of this guy right here, Tiktaalik, we have to pay taxes. 
because this is considered the ancestor, one of the ancestors of life on land where he made that transition to um, from water to land. But of course, there's a lot of animals that kind of like swam and crawled. So we were able to be on VR chat today. Um, and these were like the early tetrapods. There's so many different forms of them, as you can see in this beautiful image here. And unfortunately, we don't have time to dig into all of them. But these eventually led to the development of the modern day amphibians. Um, you probably know most of these. The Sicilian may, this may be your first time hearing about them, but they're worm-like little guys. Very cute, very slimy. Um, I, okay, not real slime, you guys. You know what I mean. They have a mucus. Um, mucus. Mucus. And, whoa. Well, you know what? Okay, here's their order oh, names, oh. but we do actually have to skip because we're running out of time. Um, frogs and toads. No. They're grouped together. Salamanders grouped together. Sicilians on their own. And of course, we know that salamanders can look uh, very differently um, depending on where they're found. Really fun fact, the highest diversity of salamanders is actually in North America, which is really, really cool. And uh, why it's so important to... Sicilians, you'll have to look them up. You'll have to look them up. Who knows where they are? Who knows? Eventually, evolution said, you know what? You want an egg? You got an egg. And this was... <laughs> This is when life on land really began to flourish because amphibians were always tied to the water. They had to lay their eggs in water or near water for it to be able to survive. But with the amniotes evolution, you started to see things like shelled eggs develop where life on land could really persist. You didn't have to be tied to water as much as past animals were. No when more drying up. Hmm? No more drying up. Now oh. we're wet all the time. Yes, it's true. It's true. Anyway, <laughs> skull morphology. All the animals um, have different skulls in, uh, from this moment onward. So diapsida means you have two openings in your skull behind your eye. Anapsid means you have none. And synapsid means that we have just one. Diapsid is the birds and most reptiles. Synapsid is the mammals. And anapsid is the turtles. That's why I said most reptiles. Now, you may notice I put here a uh, reptiles question mark because reptiles actually isn't uh, a, a completely holistic group the way that we currently describe it. It should actually contain the birds like like dear Into here um, if it was going to be scientifically accurate because birds are related to the reptiles and they should be included in them. And what's really cool is sure. at some point reptiles uh, where they still do. Um, the bones of a reptilian jaw, when the mammals started to evolve, those bones that make up their jaw actually evolved into what our, our ear bones are. Because for mammals, balance and things like that started to be, well, this is not the exact reason, but um, balance is very important to mammals. Our ear bones and such like that kind of help with that a lot. Um, but yes, so we have a different jaw structure than re reptiles do. We still have those structures. It's just in our ears instead, which is very creepy. <laughs> um, so diapsida includes the tuatara and the lizard snakes, etc. Tuatara are actually in their own group because they are so evolutionary unique that they're not exactly lizards or anything else. They are their own thing and they are exclusively found in New Zealand. This slide, very, very big, very, very big. But essentially what it is saying, the Archosauria morphia not only includes modern day crocodiles, it also includes the dinosaurs and dun dun dun, the birds. <laughs> birds are actually birds. living descendants of order Sauritia, which are the theropod-like dinosaurs and the sauropod dinosaurs, such as T-Rex and long neck creatures. Uh, that's what birds are related to. Finally, we're getting to birds, birds and oh birds. my, we have five minutes. We have five minutes. How would you explain birds? How would you explain birds? Uh, flappies, wings, they fly. They also have lungs. They, they got... have bones. Let's go. What they about the bones? What about the bones? The inside. All this stuff has bones on the inside. It's about 20% of life. Let's go. Yeah, and the, but the bones are good. <laughs> like, technically hollow, but not technically. They, they have air in them. Mammals. Wow. We're finally to mammals, everybody. Wow. I hope you've been remembering all of this. We got four chambered hearts. We have a diaphragm muscle underneath our lungs that allows more efficient breathing. This is also what causes you to hiccup. So every time you hiccup, you can curse your diaphragm muscle. Some mammals, like the platypus and echidna, lay eggs and only have one opening 
besides their mouth for everything, which is called a cloaca. Birds have that as well. Um, eventually, we started to see mammals evolve to where the instead of an egg, they uh, their development is in the uterus. And depending on the exact type of mammal, that development may complete completely in the uterus, such as our group of mammals, the eutherians, or it may use some of the development there and continue later on in a pouch, which is metatherians, aka the marsupials. Marsupials. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so I have this picture here. Wow, this is actually the last slide. This is the last slide, everybody. Oh, dang. Well, there we go. We got through all life. And yeah. you remember all of it and you know everything. Obviously, because we went through all of the insect orders, which contribute to 70 percent of life mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the reason why i have mm -hmm, a polar bear yeah. here uh, especially on some melting ice is because i know this panel was quite frantic and goofy and silly and and overall just plain weird but the reason why into and i do these panels or you know do our own twitch streams or do our twitter posts of sharing just animal facts and stuff is because our planet not doing so hot these days or actually i guess it is kind of and depending on where you are it is doing hot <laughs> and that's what's bad about it but um our planet's in some really bad shape and i'm a firm believer in that the more that we know about the creatures that we share our planet with the more we can feel inspired to care about them whether that's animals that you traditionally thought were gross like uh the polychaetes but now that you've seen a photo of how beautiful they look up close you may have a change of heart about them and warm like creatures maybe and you, you... Might actually think that the rotifers are just gross now yeah yeah maybe just the rotifers <laughs> <laughs> you may be interested in some of the things we said about the arthropods or you learn some cool facts about the squids the reason why we do these things no matter how silly and rushed these panels seem is we love making science fun we love making it entertaining and engaging and the whole point of it all is to get you guys to care about the planet around us and you may think well all of us care all of us care the point is helping people who didn't really care actually get to that point and then people that do care get them to care a little bit more because the more we care the more we yeah. feel inspired to learn and make a difference on our big 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 blue amazing planet that we have so i just want to say just understand yeah. that there's so much life on the mm -hmm. planet right like mm -hmm. obviously we couldn't fit it all in an hour because it would take years decades lifetimes yeah it would take a while. It would take a really long time to, to get through everything. But uh, yes. There's a lot of life to care about. Yeah, life matters, ours and theirs. It's very true. Uh, thank you both for your education on zoology. It's lovely to see such passion. Yes. And I do want to say, I know this was a goofy panel, but if you enjoy hearing from us, you like our voices. <laughs> Or you like learning things from us. We both do science communication on our own channels, whether that is Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, any sorts of things. You can see our contact information at the bottom of this stream. Our Twitters are listed there as well, our, as, well as our link tree and cards, um, respectively. Um, we, we both do science communication all over the place. If you want to catch a full-length class uh, or you just want to catch like solid facts instead of us rushing through it, find us there. We're always available for science communication questions you may have. It may take us a while to get back to direct questions. Uh, Into's working on their PhD. I have a full-time job outside of all of this. Um, so definitely patience is appreciated. But we're always down for questions. Be sure to follow us where you can see our link tree and card accounts. And yeah, that's where you can find us and support us. And if you're going to MFF, we're going to have an in-person version of this. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So you can see us in person. Always make this stuff so fun. Ah, oh, thank you, Zadok. Yes, 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 yes. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. Well, you guys, I think we have another panel coming up here. And as much as we would love the blab about animals, to the folks at CozyCon that are listening in on this stream, <laughs> thank you. Thank you to the chat. And follow us Thank on our everybody. platforms. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great rest of your little virtual con with CozyCon. Yeah. Toodles, everybody. Yeah.